Starfleet Underground. Every week, we'll take a look at the latest Star Trek news and then check out a current or classic episode of Star Trek. This week, Captain Giorgio and Ash Tyler return via Section 31. Admiral Cornwell lays down the law. Meanwhile, Tilly makes a friend with the power of ice cream. Hey, why is our computer swearing at our captain? Could it be that damn autocorrect? Also, what do unicorns have to do with the number 12 million? Hey everyone, and as that guy used to say back on a little show called Fantasy Island, smiles everybody, smiles. We're <laughs> here at Starfleet Underground, and um, we have our regular crew here today. We have Heather. Hello, good to see you. Those tribbles, man. I stepped on a tribble when I woke up this morning and I hit my head on the uh, my little bed post and I've had this headache all day. That tribble owes me an espresso, I'm just saying. <laughs> oh, wow. If they start learning how to use the replicators, I, I, I shudder to think what we will have in the galley. <laughs> Aren't tribbles just replicators naturally? Yes, this they're is true. a natural replicator. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> Speaking of the galley and the person who helps keeps our alarm, our, our stuff running properly, we have Rocky. Yep, hanging out in engineering and trying not to replicate tribbles. And me, my name, of course, is Nathan Adams. I'm captain of this vessel. And try to keep everything going smoothly here. And today's show of course, is being brought to you by Section 31. And people like you, if you ever decide you ever want to donate to us or anything else, send us a, a wave. Um, we have all our communication, communication channels. Oh, my God. Was that coffee or tea I had this morning? It might have been tea. Oh, that's tea. <laughs> <laughs> How did I do that? Oh, my God. Just do all the stuff to get a hold of us will be on the tail end of this show. And um, we're going to go into corrections today. We have any corrections from last week? Yes. So we have a correction brought to us by Sylvia McGregor on YouTube. We were commenting about how Tilly and Stannis were singing that, quote, new song that we love so much. And we thought it was so cool. They put a new song on there. Ends up it was not new. It's Space Oddity by David Bowie, which is a double hitter because our title last week had oddity in it so we should have known that <laughs> no. well it depends on how new you think new is uh for some people it still is new it's, uh, well, i mean what what year did that album come out 60s 70s 80s that's i don't know newer than a lot of stuff that's out there that's 30 years old <laughs> but that's okay. Thank you so much for bringing that to our attention. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't like P. Diddy had nothing to do with that track. I'm just saying. <laughs> Uh, so, Sylvia, thank you very much for that correction. We really do appreciate that. I got this new sound right here. Oh. This guy called Bowie. You'll, you'll love it. <laughs> <laughs> Jump magic, jump magic. Have you seen Labyrinth? D I love David. Bowie oh, yeah. You know, that that's another cool movie. I said, smells bad. <laughs> yeah, smells bad. That's what I, I remember that. from that movie. Yes. <laughs> that was a that was a very cool show. Uh oh. Um, hey, Rocky. Yo. I've been getting weird, like pulsing things on my display here on the computer system. Are we ever going to get somebody to really get into this? I mean, I mean, you can just tap it on the side just a few times. It should stop. I know I mean, it's not it, the it, right way to solve the problem, but. And because of that, I was talking to one of the, the, the biggity, biggity, wiggities. We're supposed to be meeting in a couple of weeks. <laughs> and I inadvertently insulted him. And <gasps> I'm, I'm not much into am ambassadorship. Oh, no. So, really? yeah, we're going to need to try to smooth that over. So we're going to need to look for somebody that's going to uh -huh. come in, try to smooth it down and fix these friggin systems. So. Yeah. Wasn't that the same ambassador that really liked the cherry cheesecake our replicator made and now our replicators on the fritz? Yeah, that's that. I was going to use that to try oh. to, to smooth things over. But yeah, we don't want to we don't want him to come in and order a cherry cheesecake and get like a um, uh, an a guava cheesecake or something. A guava cheesecake. 
I got to try that. It, you think it tastes good, but it, it's too cactusy. Oh, yeah. I don't want any cactus in my cheesecake. No, especially when you bite down and you hit one of the needles. Ooh, it's ooh. not fun. Well, you don't want your food to bite back. That's, I mean, <laughs> talk about God all you no, want. It doesn't bite back. Yeah, if we wanted that, we would just eat the triples. <laughs> yeah, seriously. I'm sorry. Don't nibble on a triple. <laughs> no, that's funny. Don't nibble on the triple. <laughs> this public service announcement brought to you by Tribbles Incorporated. And the more 31. you know. And section 31. The, yeah. more you know. the more you know. Don't nibble that triple. <laughs> oh, my stomach hurts. So. <laughs> so that's two things on our list. We need someone to fix our system and we need someone to be able to, to, to smooth things over. Because I, I typed so long on the voice translator to this VIP person and it came out goodbye whore. So <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, oh. Oh, autocorrect it again. Oh <laughs> god. It is like Damn that oh. autocorrect. <laughs> oh no. No. Don't and combine autocorrect it, in the translator. It doesn't it's not yeah. good. You can't trust and it. And I normally and I normally tell it to read it back, but I didn't this time I sent it and then I oh. got the read receipt and I and I he was all ticked off and I went to go look at it and I went, <laughs> Oh no. <laughs> Oh, why, does, no. why does that stuff always happen with important people or celebrities? It never happens with, I like, you know, know, my family or friends or anything like that. It only happens with important people, like celebrities. And Yeah, so well, we have to fix that because without their permission, <laughs> we're going to have to take the long way round. <laughs> That's not good. Uh, we're just having a week of uh, troubleshooting on this ship, aren't we? Yeah, we have. And, and <laughs> thanks to the person that sent in the correction, I've had the computer upload all of David Bowie's tracks so we can be listening to David Bowie on the way to get more familiar <laughs> with music so we don't miss that part again. <laughs> Dance magic, dance magic. Okay, yeah, go that's going to be one of them. Um, <laughs> the homework assignment, if you guys had listened, we we're talking about the, the short, which was Runaway. And then we're going to also be discussing about the next episode on the chain there of Discovery, which is what, episode five? Saints I of believe. Imperfection is what I wrote down. Saints of Correct. Imperfection. So what did you guys think of Runaway? I like that one. It was, so, was that the first actual short track? Oh, Good question. No. I'm, I'm, I was trying to find it in my, my list of tracks and I'm like, wait, this looks like it was like the first one on the list. And I don't know if it's the all access interface or not, but I was like, it was an earlier one. That's for sure. It might have been. But um, it was definitely a good one. I don't think it was the first one. I was really confused. Let me see. There, yeah, it was the first one. Was it? Yep, it was the first one, according to the computer here. Oh, okay. It was in October 4th in the year of, damn, that was a long time ago, 2018. <laughs> Back oh, in wow, the day. That was a, yeah. yeah, that yeah. was old. Wow, that's cool. Um, wait a minute. Damn it, the computer just told me you suck. <laughs> Get this thing fixed. <laughs> What the hell? Don't get a virus on a starship. It never works out right. Starship computers get a little angry sometimes. You know, that explains my lunch break. I went into the holodeck. I had a program set out. I was going to have a nice picnic on a beach. And dude, all of a sudden I'm in my MMORPG and I'm getting like axed basically <laughs> by this, you know, troll that's eight feet tall. And I'm like, no, I didn't want to spend my lunch doing this. I wanted a nice relaxing holodeck and it freaked out on me and put me in like one of my fighter games. Yeah, we need to get somebody here. So that's definitely on the list. All right. So <laughs> we got Runaway, which was it, it was a really good short. And did you pick up the little things, which I kind of made it interesting because you always thought of the starship. We never see the bridge when it's off hours. We always watch the show when you have the A crew that's on. There's always the captain. You figured he can't be on there 24 hours a day, so they got to have a skeleton crew or somebody for the night shift, so to speak. And the show started with them talking about shift five. Well, I was surprised they, yeah, yeah, and they shut down the lights in the cargo bay. I thought that thing was always manned. Yeah. You know, but I thought that was pretty cool because, and again, you want to be energy efficient. So parts of the ship's not being used. The lights go down well, for shift sense. five. Yeah. And just like on a plane, if you ever remember reading stories about the old style Earth planes before the transporters took over and people flew in, in jets, I think they were called. Um, whenever it was a nighttime flight, if my memory serves correctly, the crew would turn the lights all down so people could sleep. 
And they probably did the same thing for shift five on the ship. Everything got put into a gray mode. There was nobody in the cafeteria. Mm-hmm. And it yeah, was everything just- goes night mode, yeah. And that mm-hmm. break room looked exactly like a break room um, you would see on Earth in, say, you know, 1999 or 2000, you know? Yeah, without the food being done so quickly. Right, <laughs> exactly. And I loved how she went up to the replicator and was like, quadruple espresso with a milk alternative. That is ill-advised. That amount of caffeine is my best friend. <laughs> and then she gave her like a stink eye. And I'm like, I recognize that stink eye. Pip gives me that stink eye every single day. Seriously? I know that. <laughs> we saw a lot of her emotion come out on this, yeah. you know, so uh, it gives a hint of what Tilly is going to be in the future. Yeah. And we also got a little hint of her background too, her family life and how, her relationship with her mother. That was interesting. Yeah, it was. That was not, I mean, if you hear that your daughter's going to go into the command program i mean it's like I, my parents be jumping up and down off the wall like yes and <laughs> tilly's mother wasn't very happy about it all what's no. up with that because i think tilly you know tilly doesn't appear on the base level to be like command material but you watch all the potential she has and you just add it all up and you're like you know tilly could probably i bet she could captain the ship and be very good at it yeah. well she growled <laughs> I mean, <laughs> She growled. I love that. She growled back. <laughs> you know, it, it is kind of like most dogs or animals. You growl back and they're like, wait a minute. You just did what? supposed to be the aggressor. <laughs> <laughs> yep. My dog, when that was playing, uh, Pip jumped up and tried to attack the screen. And I was like, no, it's okay. She was, they're friends. <laughs> <laughs> that is so cool. It, it, it shows that, you know, when you get people who really care, they care. I mean, she she was like, what's going on? She took time to find out. And you thought that this thing was like some sort of animal from the sounds it made, from the just a little invisible kind of hand, semi-visible hand. It's like, is this a predator thing on, on the planet? Yeah, the neon glowing blood Which, by the way, don't they teach you in the academy not to touch neon glowing liquid substance? I'm just saying. You're not supposed to. Yeah. Glowing things. (laughs) You're not really supposed to, you know, reach out and grab. That's for sure. Right. Put on some gloves. You don't go around touching people's blood. Yeah. That that was a violation. At least scan it with a tricorder first. Yeah. (laughs) Thank you. That, That she didn't know what it was. Didn't she scan it first and then touch it or did she touch it and then scan it? I don't remember. I don't remember the sequence, but I wouldn't touch it. Yeah, I wouldn't touch it either. It's, you know, but again, it shows you how looks can be deceiving because you thought this was a dangerous creature thing. And turns out she was friggin' royalty. Yeah, <laughs> Literally, a, yeah. A 17 year old kid. You know, but her demeanor totally changed when she let the truth out. It's like, I'm a, you, you're a princess. And the look on Tilly's face is she's like, oh. <laughs> 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 I thought that was funny. This episode could have been named uh, Tilly's Bad Day. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, I did, you know, who who got to clean up the uh, the the cafeteria after all that? That's the scene that we didn't see. It got cut out of the whole sequence. I know. Was, who cleaned? And what did she say? It was uh, where was the the thing about the rabbit? It was a hormonal. Uh, oh, I had to write down. Where, <laughs> that where, was where great. is it? Yeah. Hormonal space rabbit. That's what I wrote down. <laughs> so freaking hilarious! I'm like, it was. <laughs> yeah, horn- and it escaped the lab. Oh, that was awesome. He's got mood swings. Boy. That was so <laughs> funny. Cool. And an appetite with with the replicators. Yeah. I've never seen replicators like, make food that fast. That was pretty impressive. That was an AI version of a food fight right there. <laughs> if, if computers want to have a food fight, that's the AI version of it. Wow. Everything was going, you know, it's like, <laughs> wow. So mm-hmm. now we know the replic that, that place is favorite because last episode was like number one, getting French fries. And so was it number one to get the French fries? And a cheeseburger. Yeah. yeah. The little and white a cheeseburger. Chili cheese. Yep. Price. Yep. Yep. So that's like pretty cool. I would be like in there all the time, like in and out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Number one. <That'd> <laughs> yeah. awesome. Well, and, and they must have some really good ice cream because that ice cream rate like bonded them instantly. It was like, oh, ice I cream. Like, <laughs> sugar, sugar's sh- awesome. Yeah, yeah, sugar is. Sugar rush, sugar rush. Sugar rush. <laughs> the, and that but color. The color. Yeah. Of the ice cream. What, what flavor was that? Ah, didn't they say what flavor it was? I, think I, I didn't catch said. the flavor. I didn't write it down either. 
Well, the replicator well, was saying seven things at once, so it was kind of hard to catch all of them. But uh, at the very end of this uh, season two, when this character comes back and uh, Tilly greets her with the bowl of ice cream, I think they said what the ice cream was then, too. Oh, that's right. Okay. Yeah. So, but, so we're going to have to look for that when, yep. that when we get to that episode. So when I was watching season two of Discovery, and it was the very last episode, and this character comes in and she helps the team, I'm like, where the heck did she come from? Did I miss an episode? Like, I seriously thought I missed an episode and I went through all of my episodes you and missed I'm like, the I short didn't track. miss it. I missed the, <laughs> yeah. And that's why I missed the short track. It's always good to watch the extras. Yes. And see, like yeah, all the short tracks somehow always have a bearing on what's going on. That's why I think the last one we watched with Q&A, though, no, actually it wasn't Q&A. That was the one where the woman, where Pike put her through the paces to see if she's going to be on the Enterprise. The feeling yeah. we might wind up seeing her. So mm-hmm. a lot of it has has really good bearing on it, which is pretty cool. And we get a chance also in this one to saw Tilly with wet hair again. So <laughs> there's that. <laughs> Yeah. Now we get a Star Trek okie doke for the next show because everyone thinks Tilly's dead. Ah, I see where you're going with that. Yeah. This was a, a, just the first opening sequence of this episode. All that slow-mo and the emotion and it's all in voiceover. All you're seeing is these the visual reaction that everybody's having. All these actors, are they're not saying a word. No words are being said. And you're following no. the entire scene with a little bit of voiceover. You could probably get mute and see exactly what was going on. And everyone was so upset they lost Tilly. And, and it shows how much she's loved on the vessel. So very loved. Yeah. The voiceover, what they were saying was um, words define who we are, officer, orphan, widower, shipmate. And I thought that was a really deep way to start the episode. I mean, just that one sentence right there, we could have like a two hour conversation on just that alone. And I thought that was a really good way of opening it. It was. that. That's awesome. It was a prayer of faith, mm-hmm. you know, that they had in the beginning. So it was like, wow. So it was to show the impact of everything. And then they go and try to get Spock's shuttle. And it switches instantly to action, action, action. It was yeah. it was a very exciting, just, you know, coming up onto a shuttle kind of thing. It was like, uh, oh, wow, it's, the shuttle's gone defensive. Why is Spock doing this? This is insane. It's not insane. Somebody from Section 31 is sitting on board the shuttle. Yeah, Giorgio. And they call her captain. And I'm like, I'm still thinking of her as like Emperor Giorgio. Like, oh, my God, it's the emperor. I love how Pike is just talking with her. And, you know, it's like, okay, yeah, that's what's going on with you. And and it's like old friends coming back together. And then they have the scene later where where he's talking with Burnham and he's like, I have no freaking idea who she is now. But (laughs) (laughs) he couldn't tell by his reaction. He was like totally playing it normal. You see her side eye though. Oh my God. If Pike was a little bit more observant, he would have saw Burnham's stink eye every time (laughs) she looked at Giorgio. (laughs) Well, well, it became instant. And when he noticed the phaser thing, the phaser thing (laughs) was like, yeah, you you took a couple extra seconds to put that phaser down. I kind of stood out. Yeah. Especially for Giorgio, because everyone knows that Giorgio and Michael had a close relationship and that was like Michael's mother, you know? So for Mm. Michael to act this way towards her. Yeah, it was completely as they say illogical mm. but bum she had her badass all black clothes on so like a space mm-hmm. ninja and we get the intro to the second 31 yep you know i thought i saw her in the corner of my room a couple of times at night Uh-oh. i wasn't sure but now i'm pretty sure <laughs> were you doing something illegal because then i could see that happening <laughs> no i just think uh giorgio swings both ways that's all oh <laughs> Well, maybe she's contemplating. Swinging. Well, I, yeah, I she can... does swing both ways. I, I remember that episode. <laughs> so she's probably looking at you goes, I wonder if she could keep a secret. <laughs> no, can't, can't, no can't that's keep probably, a secret. No, that's probably it. That's probably it. Heather doesn't keep secrets. No, I would come down uh, to the break room and everything and tell you guys immediately. <laughs> <laughs> But now they first, uh, Michael and her have a chance to have their first face to face after she kind of disappears. Yeah. When the the confrontation that they have, you know, is like she doesn't trust her. And I I don't blame her because she wanted her to eat Saru. Uh, (laughs) You know, quite the delicacy. Don't eat your friends. Oh, God. Yeah, and she was asking if Leland knows if she's like the mirror universe, Giorgio. And Giorgio's like, Mm -hmm. yeah, of course he does. Duh. (laughs) 
<laughs> oh, that guy. Yeah, Leland. Yeah, he, he's, I get it. They both seem like they're respectable Starfleet officers, except Leland is like, whatever it takes, whether it's good or bad to get the job done. Yeah, you could tell Leland's the, uh, not a good person, so to say. Well, yeah, the back and forth between him and Pike was just like, uh, Pike doesn't, I mean, they have history, but he doesn't trust him. No, we can't blame him. And you see how badass his ship looks. Yeah, they, they have that, that bond that's like, it's, it's very poisoned. Mm. And what is that? I'm going to ask you, Rocky, because you're our engineer. When they decided to find, you know, for the hunt for, for Tilly and they wanted to keep the ship out, this was further down the episode. Mm-hmm. And he put those things on the side of the ship in order to activate the tractor beam. Our tractor beams don't send out little grappling hooks. So yeah, to speak. I'm pretty sure the Section 31 technology is probably stolen from another race or something to that <laughs> effect because they are just a couple steps a- a- ahead on technology. So it must be like an extra gravity thing for the, there's a technical term, a gravity thing for the it's tractor the- beam to beam onto and grab hold. It's like extra, extra stronghold. It's the future's version of a James Bond pen that mm. turns into a laser. Yeah, I think James Bond was a predecessor to uh, Section oh, 31. Section 31, yeah. because yeah. the technology, the stuff Q would come up with would go right to Section 31. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, you got a point. Well, same thing with that little MacGuffin device in Picard that you just had to imagine your fix. I could see yeah. Section 31 wanting that. That's for certain. Yep. You know, we still don't have one on board the vessel. We need to get one of those things. Well, you know, that's what O was doing when she was uh, coming after Picard. She was trying to get that thing. It's like, I want yeah. it. Yeah, she definitely did. Can you imagine? Oh, <laughs> I'm not going to go there. Okay. We have Tilly. We see Tilly again, finally, but she's on the other side now. Apparently, their transporter gave her wet hair. <laughs> <laughs> well, that that transporter, that was pretty cool having a cocoon, an organic, you know, life form cocoon be the transporter. It's the and, only way to fly. Well, I was wondering <laughs> when they figured that out, why didn't they just crawl into the cocoon and transport to Tilly that way? Why did they have to do the half jump? Uh, probably because I'm thinking that there's no way to initialize it. You can crawl in it, but yeah. if you have no one to actually initialize it, you need somebody to control it. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. So that's why they did that half jump, well, which again, we heard the cool black alert alarm again. In that case, when they uh, do the cocoon transport, I hope they have a uh, duct tape over that one button. <laughs> the one button. Yeah. Oh. They, lost, they lost our last guess's arm. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> which, isn't, which isn't cool. And the way everything looked, the landscape is like, you know, if she was a druggie, Tilly probably would have said, wow, it looks like I dropped a tab of mescaline or, or did mushrooms. Everything looks so, you know, Lucy yes. in the sky with diamonds. <laughs> yep. It was like the most pretty Christmas display, you know, ever. It was really, really <laughs> cool. Lots of Christmas lights. She's so used to caffeine that that was like, you know, a double whammy. <laughs> oh, yes. She was so already so. whammed. <laughs> yes. It's like Avatar on steroids. It it sure was. (laughs) You know, part that made me laugh, like, unexpectedly, I mean, almost a spit laugh, was when Tilly was making the promise. And she's like, what are you doing with your tiny finger? Yes, I love that. (laughs) I mean, I instantly recognize the pinky swear, but I guess it's not universally known among species. I love the pinky swear. I think the pinky swear is one of our things on this ship. It's funny. Some things are just universally understood, um, yeah. but pinkies may not be. And unfortunately, <laughs> it's like the word whore is understood everywhere because the guy got really mad at me. So there's some things we, we know that is a universal concept. I'm afraid what, what autocorrect would come up with when you type pinky swear in and what it would what would oh, it come goodness. up with? Yikes. <laughs> not going to happen. Not going to do it. <laughs> Not going to do it. But now you hear that this supposedly um, she talked about the monster yeah. that was in their realm. And it's a matter. It's a point of view. When one person's monster is another person's lover, you know, right. or, or phrase. And we get you. Yeah. We finally get you back. Yeah. And she kept saying he's attacking us. But what they find out is he's actually just defending himself from, you know, them trying to tear him apart. Or, you know, be metastasized or metabolized. Yeah, using emotional armor. And I thought, how appropriate. 
How many people we know today puts up emotional armor? They put up a wall. Mm. You should not let people in to protect themselves. You know, yeah. and the fact that it was dark kind of shows you that he was in a dark place. Yeah. So there's a lot of little things I, I picked up on that I thought was kind of cool, you know. So I thought that was that was neat. And to see Stamis is like, oh, it's it's you. I've, I've missed you so much. And, and wouldn't that be nice if life we could do that? And just go someplace and, and get them back other than running it in the holodeck. That would be... <laughs> That would be really, really awesome. That would be. You know, and, and then they had the, the fake out for us. You know, we think they're going to go through the supposed airlock and he can't. Yeah, it was, it was like, oh, this is going to be such a little beautiful sequence and he's going to come back and oh, wait, what happened there? That's not supposed to happen. This is not happening. Yeah, it was It was like, what's going on? This is not the way we expected this to happen. They, they kind of faked it out again. Right. But it no. made sense the way that they explained it. I like that. It did. It really did. And it shows Tilly's always thinking. Mm-hmm. She's, she's got a really quick analytical mind that doesn't seem to shut down for stress. Um, yeah. Most animals, um, people and us included, when you get hit with a high volume of stress, it's scientifically known that your brain can freeze and lock down. And that's one of the reasons why lions roar, um, because the roar short circuits it's your mind where you just all of a sudden you freeze, you're frozen. And she obviously, which one of the products that makes her a good officer or will be a good captain is the fact she was able to operate under that stress. Time's yeah. running out. The ship's being shaken apart. Wait, I have a way for you to come back. That's what I loved about this. And even in the short trek, both of those episodes, the people that Tilly deals with are just as friggin' smart and sharp that she is. I mean, they're both mm-hmm. razor sharp in the sciences department they understand things and they can converse on that level that's when when you look at uh you know somebody else and you don't trust them you suddenly figure out you've got something in common and you're like oh okay i can deal with you with tilly it's science and that's just totally awesome well like with the runaway it was funny to watch her and poe go at it because here she is talking about science and she's like explaining a replicator and she's like but can you invent that no you can't because you had ice cream 30 seconds ago so you (laughs) see you know the science mind mixed in with the you know actual human being mind like you just had ice cream so don't tell me about that yeah it's it's a fun um combination to see and i think that's why people like tilly especially when she went in and she grabbed that gun and she went full metal jacket i was i was like oh, that was funny <laughs> That was cool. That was funny. And it shows the passion. Anybody who's passionate about something will do everything they can to learn it. Just like in the original mm-hmm. series, when Scotty was, com- uh, you know, tell him he's confined to quarters. The first thing he says, oh, good. I can catch up on those tech manuals. <laughs> I've been wanting to read, you yeah. know, and it's just like a new video game. If you have a video game you want to beat, you scour the information highway to try to find out as much possible about it and to know about it and how to get through. And and as Starfleet, I can imagine, you know, trying to learn everything, every free time you're reading about knew this, knew that, knew that, just like you, Rocky, you're always up on the stuff that for engineering, for audio visual and everything, the new stuff comes out. You want to know about it? Ask the rock. He'll know. (laughs) <laughs> and it's the same thing when it comes to to you, when it comes to like, what are the odds for so-and-so? What's the tokes for that? Heather's got you covered. Well, Heather steals his magazines and uh, puts them in the bathroom and doesn't tell him. Oh, yeah. That's so. where they are. Yeah. And, and now you Rocky, know. Uh, could you tone <laughs> down the suction? <laughs> I really, yesterday... Oh. Oh, and, and yeah, it created a tight seal in oh. my ass. Looked like a giant <laughs> gave it a hickey. So, could you please fix that? Just that turn it not, down a little bit, it? a little. Okay, you know, yeah. Dial it back just a little bit on the sucker. Okay. Yeah, literally, it was a sucker. So. Oh my god. <laughs> I would check into who used it last. I, I imagine it wasn't you. <laughs> yeah, that suction was like way too hard. <laughs> Those uh, damn future bodeas. <laughs> 
<laughs> so I'd appreciate that. But then when they when they finally get together, on I was looking at the discovery and I was like, oh my god, you messed up that paint job. Yeah, it's like oh the ship looks really kind of wretched now. Yeah, it did a number on that ship. But where did they go fix it with the next episode? Or did they have like little nano things that went over like the Borg does to fix it? I imagine you just hosed it off a little bit and it was just fine. <laughs> they probably took a month off, fixed it, and then the next episode is like a month and a day later. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. This is a lot of stuff that goes on we're not privy to seeing. True. Speaking of which, yeah. um, what did you guys think when Michael saw Ash again for the first time? Oh, I know. Right? Next that was like on- soap opera stuff right there. Yes! Next on Jerry Springer. <laughs> <laughs> yes, seriously. It was like, wow. Did you guys notice the cell phone on the table? A cell phone on the table? It looked like there was a cell phone on the table. Well, that could be anything. Cell phones that. are so futuristic now. It could have it could have been a cell phone and it was just somebody's pad. I'll have to go back and look for that. It wasn't a Starbucks coffee cup. It wasn't a Starbucks <laughs> cup, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I saw the cell phone on the table and I'm just like, oh, wow, that's really strange. Okay, that's so ancient and out of date and so big. I'm so used to them being smaller. Yeah, so it's like now you get Volk on the ship and and Michael is like yeah I want to touch you but we have to look professional I want to touch you all over and over again do you remember that I love Happy yeah. Gilmore sorry oh, I love yeah. that movie that, that was fun. the price is right bitch yes <laughs> damn I love that <laughs> But it, it, it was interesting seeing him there and the look on her face and Pike's instant distrust of him. Oh, very much so. Yeah, because he doesn't trust the other guy. So it was like, yeah. Pike just realizes like, okay, Section 31 just brought Giorgio aboard and she is not the same Giorgio. I know that for a fact. And this guy shows up. He's also with them. And who the hell is that guy? And, and well, Burnham trusts him. Well, if Burnham trusts him. I don't think I trust him still. I'm very, yeah, I think Pike is very uh, cautious still yeah yeah it's like you stay on the bridge you're not coming with us yeah it's protocol i i and protocol's there for a reason yeah, yeah. <laughs> i like seeing him not so nice and you know such a good person he's like i don't like you stay away from me <laughs> you know yeah it, it shows that he's good to the people he loves and trusts and yeah. others yeah you gotta you gotta take a number yeah it's not gonna work and we see the admiral back again uh was it cornwell Corn- yeah cornwell. yeah cornwell cornwell yeah cornwell yeah, yeah. uh cornwell? We see. Corn who? Go, no, no, not that good corn. That was the Corn toilet. Olio. <laughs> corn Olio? Does he need TV for his bunghole? Bungolio. Oh, God. <laughs> Uh, I'm way too easily amused. Oh, <laughs> Admiral Cornholio. I'm never going to forget that. <laughs> yeah, but she was back. Yeah, it was good to see her back. I mean, I, that's one of the characters I've missed and realizing that we probably don't have her much anymore, but really loved her character. And I loved how she sets the guy straight at the end. It's like, you're going to get along with that guy because I say so. And that's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's how she's running stuff. And she's like, we are going back to the main plot we have to find spock and i was like no shit sherlock <laughs> yeah, yeah keep, keep on mission missions. yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah. Enough with, yeah. I don't care about your bullshit. Side. We're doing the mission. Yeah. Yeah. And by the way, you're keeping Ash and Pike's like, oh, damn. Yeah. Until I say so. I was like, oh, wonderful. Thanks. Thanks a lot. <laughs> um, going back just a little bit before that, like the scene right before that, um, when they show the cocoon and they show the doctor coming through and he's there mm. and he's alive and they were oh, you know, yeah. so happy that, was, uh, that he's alive. I don't remember the everything. nudity shot. No, he's naked. So he comes yeah. up. And he's naked, and I'm like, oh my god, this is the start of a sci fi porn. Instead of a pizza guy, we got this. <laughs> I'm ah, that plot. To, yeah, okay. I'm expecting there to be like an orgy or something okay. in a second. Sci fi porn, not the pizza guy, cocoon guy. Okay, yes, gonna this Google is how that you one. Start a sci fi porn. Yeah. <laughs> He, he was definitely you was 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 in all his glory and a little a little uh, gooey. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it was remnants of the party before. <laughs> you know, but it's like, well, it's back to you. <laughs> you. 
it, it was it was good, but we know that the PST for the later episodes, we know that the post traumatic stress of that happening is really gonna put a will they or won't they get back together vibe for several shows. Yeah. You know, because it shows you sometimes when you go away, and um, I guess we can talk about that in future episodes, but sometimes when this is the same thing happens when people go out for combat and they come back, they're not exactly the same. And the loved one who remained behind may be the same, but it, it, it takes a while before they get a chance to wrap their head around who are they now again. Yeah, because they like that phrase, you can never go home. Go ahead. They were brushing their teeth together. And yeah. now it's yeah, I, I it's going to be hard watching the next set of episodes, remembering through all that, because, yeah, it does get a little tough for a moment. Well, experiences change a person. And after that experience of dying, you know, he's sort of rethinking his life and who he wants, what he wants to do and who he wants to be. I really mm -hmm. um, like that. They just didn't go back into, oh, now he's back and we're, you know, back to the way things were. I'm glad they sort of took that. I term. agree. Yeah, it takes time to, to come back from something like that. I would just I agree. Yeah. It really, really does because you have to rationalize the person you was against who you are now and whether or not the person you are now wants the same thing that the person you used to be wanted. And that might have been a mouthful, but you, you really got to go through you got to go through that. I know once I came out of the service, um, it took me almost a good two, three years before as, as uh, one of my prior bosses used to tell me before I was civilian friendly again. <laughs> so it, it takes a while before that happens. Yeah. And I like to show because um, if you guys remember the first season when Michael was first uh, put in the in the room with Tilly. Um, they weren't getting along. Tilly, Michael really didn't like Tilly so tough because she thought she was questioning and annoying. But in this episode, when Tilly looked lonely, the way Michael comforts her, I think shows a good really growth with them. Do you guys remember that scene? Well, the yeah. teardrop. I saw the teardrop coming yeah. off of Tilly's face. And I'm like, I don't remember that. And uh, it's it's one of the things when you sit closer to the TV on a nice TV, it's like, oh, wow, that detail just came right out. And I was like, oh, wow. The the you emotion of it all. Yeah. Yeah. We all need that these days. Is everybody needs a hug. Maybe yeah. that's why Giorgio's in your room. She just needed a <laughs> hug. <laughs> I, I think she just wanted to steal some of the tribbles so she could cuddle with them. She needed a hug. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe she wanted it from you. I, I thought I heard her whisper. I just want to be loved. Is that so wrong? She did. And she took my triple and then she hissed at me and left. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling you, the tribbles are just as good as puppies. Unconditional love. Just don't feed them. Oh, man. Tribbles. <laughs> was it nibbles the tribbles the truth i think i'm gonna call my oh. name is the one in the room i'm gonna call them nibbles <laughs> <laughs> nibbles <laughs> that's so perfect nibbles the tribble uh, and then did you guys notice too in this episode that when tilly first boards the ship and she's looking around and she doesn't see anyone and she's like where is everyone and may's like oh maybe they died trying to save you <laughs> yeah i was like oh they died yeah, I, I was like, yeah. thanks a lot yeah, yeah. And tilly's <laughs> like hey Thanks for that. And that's a meme. And I didn't know where that meme came from. And that's where the meme came from. I'm like, oh, I totally used that meme wrong. Now I'll never use that meme again because now I understand oh. like, what she's saying. <laughs> it's like, yeah, thanks a lot. Because I was like saying, oh, hey, thanks. But it was like, yeah, thanks for that. And I'm like, oh, I was using Oops, that meme wrong. wrong meme. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously, it's like I'm just being matter of a fact. <laughs> <laughs> hey thanks for that <laughs> seriously oh, he turned inside out and exploded <laughs> <laughs> like wait what was that <laughs> did you guys catch the phrase that Michael was saying on the voice over again let's see which phrase was, was it I wrote some hope? of this down about um, hope in an uncertain future. Um, the thing I wrote down, I wrote connection, joy, love, resurrection. If I have a path, I'm still searching for it. We all are. That's how we find our way by choosing to walk forward together. And if there is a greater hand leading us to an uncertain future, I can only hope it guides us well. There, there you go. That's the phrase. Thank you. Yeah, and it was it, it kind of that, that I thought was very powerful. And we can apply that to almost a lot of different times in Earth's history, including the current one right now. Yeah, definitely. 
because we do have an uncertain future. But, you know, we've been here for a while and we're going to continue to be here for a while. And every time we stumble, we get back up and we take a better step forward. Yep. So that's what we're going to continue. We're going to continue. Yeah. And we're just sitting here waiting mm-hmm. to see what path Earth takes for, you know, which multiverse they're going to go into. <laughs> I want them to go in the multiverse where we have unicorns and rainbows. Unicorns and rainbows. That's beautiful. Yep. That's a good universe to be in. Yeah. And then did you know that, like, if you put a dildo on top of a unicorn, like horn? No, I'm sorry. I won't what? go that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I'm going to have to sorry. ask you about that later. <laughs> we, well, I figured we weren't like, you know. <laughs> Dirty enough on this episode. I, I was thinking you have multiple passengers on a unicorn? Yes. Oh, my goodness. You can ride it <laughs> multiple ways. <laughs> and it's magical. That is magical and beautiful. <laughs> and <laughs> rainbows. Because it's a unicorn. Okay. And full of glitter. For oh, my gosh. Maybe for maybe you, uh, but no. <laughs> not for me. Every time I get a slight glimpse into Heather's mind, it's... Uh, it's disturbing. I don't know if disturbing is the right word, but there are are other words that probably aren't right for it either, but it is definitely fascinating. (laughs) What, pornographic? (laughs) Well, that's that's natural right there. (laughs) I just, I just can't. Oh, my God. (laughs) Kids at home, once you find a unicorn, do not put a dildo on its horn, okay? (laughs) Just kids at home, yeah. Oh, and I, I just told the computer just to search just out of curiosity. <laughs> so I said, computer, search unicorn porn. That's... And it came back and said, 12 million results. Oh, man. I love what you could find on the uh, uh, intergalactic webs. Talk 12 about 12 million memes. results for unicorn porn. <laughs> Okay, you know, 12 million. <laughs> you know, when I would be doing, happy with just 12. <laughs> <laughs> you know, when we're doing our daily meeting, Captain, I have to try really hard to keep my mouth shut and be really good in those meetings. <laughs> oh, my God. I, I just uh, my mind is forever damaged. 12 <laughs> million. It's magical, results. man. Once you've seen it, you can't unsee it. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. Yeah, there, there's this is a picture of a person who a unicorn <laughs> who's peeing rainbow. Okay. <laughs> oh my God! Why did you say something like this? Do not hey, Google. Have to, Be careful least, where you Google. Oh my God! At least I didn't tell you about the time like me and no, that no, leprechaun. No. <laughs> okay. No. No. <laughs> No, you realize it's going to take me 45 minutes before I can find something to get the taste out of my eyes. <laughs> you would think a leprechaun would be short. You know, he oh. has very many lucky charms. <laughs> no, oh, no, no, that's why he says you always have to be lucky charms. <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But we found a happy ending at the end of the rainbow, so it worked. <laughs> okay. I'm going to definitely going to have to try to find something to get the taste out of my eyes. Uh, all because for happy that endings. after image is, is that I don't like this after image. So Yeah. Sorry, Captain, oh. the replicators aren't working. You're going to have to oh. stick with that taste for a while. Oh, God. Oh. We need someone oh. here now. We need to fix the replicator so we can get that taste out of your oh. mouth. Computer, tell Holodeck 47 to load Captain Adam's safe space. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be here in, in a moment. Oh. oh, my God. I think we just blew his mind. I, I think you got to be yeah. very careful what you Google if you've been talking to Heather. <laughs> I found that out. I thought there wouldn't be any result, but no, I was wrong. There's 12 million results. Okay. All right. And because of that, we may wind up having listeners with new fetishes. (laughs) Yes. Expand your minds. Awesome. Free your mind and the unicorn will follow. (laughs) You know, Captain, next time we do game night, we could do that game night where we could see what's not on the internet. (laughs) Try Googling this. Oh, no, there's something for that. (laughs) Remember? Yep, we could do the Google whacking and let's see what we can come across. (laughs) All right. This was definitely a, a, a fun show. So let's make next week's a little bit also fun um <laughs> oh my god i'm trying to think after that i just like i don't know well you know what you can do 
if you're <laughs> if you're looking for stuff to Google up right now, what you've got to Google up is Star Trek appearances from actors on the internet. There's live streams that are happening now that you can just because conventions aren't a yeah. thing right now. Conventions are kind of on hold, but people are appearing on these little internet shows. One I ran into was GalaxyCon.com. And in fact, uh, right about now, I think I'm missing Marina Sirtis and Brent Spiner. But later down the road, if you travel forward in time to uh, June 13th, we're going to have uh, William Riker, Beverly Crusher and Tasha Yar or the actors that played them. Uh, Jonathan Frakes, Gates McFadden and Denise Crosby. That's June 13th at 2 p.m. Eastern time. And it's GalaxyCon.com. And you can find out by clicking on their little find out more link. They, I believe these are some of them you can actually pay money for and get more interactive with. And you can buy little like autographs and stuff. But you can also Ooh, see stuff for free. You mean they're they're doing one of those webcam things? I actually get to pay them and they do a webcam thing for me? What's okay, it called? Very careful. Very careful oh. what your answer is right here. Heather and webcam, do not Google. No. No, don't don't but, do that. That's but, not a good idea. Yeah, they're doing the video chat stuff and it's all the trend right now. They're zooming and they're, you know, they're on the nets yeah, and uh, yeah. The so, Voyager one was pretty cool if you haven't seen the Voyager one. That was very cool. Have you guys heard anything about um creation what they're doing? Um, not yet. What are they doing? I know, I know they, they've been posting some stuff gets delayed and we just don't know the, the big one, Star Trek, what's going on with that yet. And uh, we're kind of in, you know, convention limbo. So we'll, we don't know. It's driving us crazy over here. Yeah. I think for the next episode, since we're going to wind up having a little bit of a, a fun time, I think for next one, I think we should watch the second short that was in the second season short, The Trouble with Edward. And that's about the Tribbles. So cool. I think that would be a good homework assignment for us to see since we talked about our Tribbles and Nibbles with Tribbles, <laughs> that the short will be the the Trouble with Edward. So you guys remember that one. It sounds good. And the next discovery is going to be episode six. And what is that episode called? You have that off the top of your head? Um, I could Google it. Oh, how cool. You're using a keyboard. <laughs> <laughs> Does that say the, the sound of thunder? Oh, shush. No, that's the name of the episode. Oh, really? Is that what it is? <laughs> Did I Google the right thing? <laughs> Season two, episode six, Star Trek Discovery. When a signal appears over Saru's home planet, Burnham, Saru, and the crew embark on a perilous mission that puts Saru in danger and raises questions about the Red yep. Angel's intentions. It is. It's the sound of thunder, which sounded like what happened when that toilet seal was really good. <laughs> <laughs> it just went boom. Not a sound you want to heal. You kind of feel it more than hear, hear it, really. No. So our, our replicators aren't working, our badeo isn't working, and Captain. <laughs> Captain, I hate to tell you this. I had some problems with the holodeck earlier, so we seriously need some help. We need to get someone yeah. else in here. Very careful about your safe space <laughs> program. Yeah, I want to go into it. If I see a unicorn, oh my God, that's going to... With the dildo on its cord. Not gonna, no, not going to happen. Not, bad enough well, after that toilet institute, you know, I got to replicate a, a, a donut pillow. So thank you very much. If, if you see a unicorn with a dildo, on its corn, you know that you're in my holodeck program, not yours. <laughs> you know, I would instantly say end program and then leave. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks everybody for joining us for the show. We tried to keep it family friendly, but <laughs> quickly ran off the rails on that. Um, we have a, a wave out there. Hopefully we can get everything fixed by next week so we don't have all of these technical difficulties on here. So everybody who are listening, if you wind up getting through the transdimensional broadcast here and you're still on Earth during the corona thing, be safe. Wash mm -hmm. your hands for at least 20 seconds. Try to keep social distancing if possible. Wearing a mask is not just for your protection. It's also for another person's protection. Because when you talk, sneeze, or breathe heavy, the droplets that contain the virus can carry out as far as six feet. 
or more. Um, however, when you wear a mask, it just creates a tiny little nimbus cloud around you so you don't affect someone else. Now, just because your immune system can handle it doesn't necessarily mean that someone else's can. So you can be asymptomatic. You may be, a, yeah, you may not know you have it, but you may spread it anyway. And you right. just don't and want to do that. Spreader. You want to protect exactly. others. Exactly. Yeah. Because you don't want to wind up finding out that you uh, made your best friend's grandmother die because you gave it to your friend and he gave it to her. Yeah. And so you just, just be careful. Always operate on the side of caution. Yeah. Um, we have biofilters and stuff for a reason. It's about it's about thinking of other people, not just yourself. Mm -hmm. We don't want you to get sick, but you have to think about other people too. Yep. Yes. We got to be careful. And I always said that if we had a virus that it allowed everyone's genitalia to explode, people would practice social distancing. I have no doubt <laughs> that if somebody walks down the street and their crotch just exploded. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> They'd be masked and asthmat suits and everything else all over the place. You're going to go out for bread? Fuck that shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm not going to have my meat and two veg explode. <laughs> Picturing a mask on a unicorn. <laughs> Picturing a unicorn tail. <laughs> <laughs> okay, on that note, we're going to go ahead and, and leave before we go back down the unicorn hole. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. For oh, my God, I just said it. Oh, you didn't do that no. on purpose? I thought you did that on purpose. I thought that was so no. freaking funny. Oh, man. No, 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 no. Please, you guys everyone. will never think a unicorn is the same way again. No. Oh, my God. <laughs> No, now I'm not afraid to look up. You thought you were traumatized and, and before. Oh, no. Now I'm not going to even look at <laughs> unicorns and leprechauns. No. <laughs> Good thing. Hey, at least we okay. didn't go into the fairies. They're freaky. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're 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 done here now. Yeah, we're, we're placing. We're, we're starting the music now. We're starting the music no. now. <laughs> so thanks everybody for listening, and please just don't have a great week. Make it so. Starfleet Underground beaming in to a podcast feed near you. Lock on to our website at starfleetunderground.com and send your comments and questions to the collective at starfleetunderground.com. Follow us on Twitter at Starfleet Under G and on Facebook and Instagram, we're Starfleet Underground.